Dr. Clyde, Rimrock Wellness Center, teaching you how to get out of pain. This is step eight. So step eight, we're starting, finally starting to get into the exercises. So step one through six was all about decompression, which is everything. It's learning how to engage those deeper spinal muscles that we're always talking about. We're just either atrophied completely on people, whether atrophied, that's when everything is locked down, or there's sections that are atrophied and sections that are really tight. So step eight is really important. It's one of my favorite steps because it reinforces some of the first six steps. So just typically if we're gonna do like our founder exercise where we already got steps one through six working for us, the feet are grabbing, the spine is engaged, the head is over top of the shoulders. So now we're bringing the hands out front. So step eight is we're squeezing in. This is a lot of the rotator cuff mu muscles, which is forcing external rotation of the shoulders. You can see that a little bit, and as I squeeze, my head gets taller. And this is mirroring what the legs are doing. So as I'm squeezing in here, my inner thighs are squeezing. Remember, that was step three, internal rotation of the hip, getting the hip in the socket. So you can really feel, now as you push those shoulders into the socket, the hip is squeezing into the socket. And the fingertips are mirroring what the feet were doing, step one. So everything's coming back full circle. So you're really just getting more tension built up. So that's the difference between yoga and foundation training. Yoga, we would just kind of drop into chair pose and hold. Here we're loading everything. We're loading the posterior chain. We're even engaging it even more. And then we're pulling in to chair pose or Dr. Goodman's founder exercise. Now you can see I'm shaking. Everything is really engaging a lot here. I'm forcing just hip and shoulders to work this way. We're here, the spine is helping out. It's really hard to see the difference, but you're gonna feel it. Okay guys, we're gonna talk about step eight, about getting the hips in the socket and the shoulders in the socket with that inner thigh squeeze, it really lengthens us. We're talking about like what we feel as chiropractors, the restrictions we feel in the spine that let us know that someone needs foundation training or that there's weaknesses or restrictions. Because as we're lifting up, not only are we lifting up against restrictions, but also dominant type muscles. And that's often right here. So in this area, we got the spinal erectors and the QL, and we just feel a lot of restrictions. This is just generally everyone across the board is really tight in here. And we have uh, breathing issues here as well, just because of this area, compressing, pushing this way. So we're always trying to lift up. So as we're lifting up, we're actually doing what you should be doing in the decompression stance. We're pushing against those tight muscles and restrictions and then activating the rest of the body first. Because when we're laying on the table, we're forced to be hip and shoulder level. Now what happens with this being so stiff is we get too much motion from the bottom of the spine. That's a big problem with foundation training. A lot of people are bending from here. So you can feel it's a little swollen. That's just generally across the board. Everyone's swollen and weaker here. Because even though there's mainly just big rod ligaments here that cover the sacrum, there's also those deeper multifidus muscles from here, sacrum all the way up the spine. So the posterior chain is even down here as well. And what happens when this area is weak and we're generating a lot of motion there, compensation motion from this area, or even the sacroiliac joint here, the hip joint is not doing its job. It's not moving as much as it should. And that's the ball socket joint. It's supposed to have a lot of motion. You got Phil over here for a reason. Lots of motion from that hip joint when we're walking. But if that's stuck, like most people, they're turned out to the side. And I'll show that again in a second when we get around our side. When it's stuck in external rotation, we're generating too much compensation motion here in the lower part of the spine. And that's a problem because then we've got weakness of these muscles in pink, multifidus. So that's one area I would generally adjust on most people. There's other areas like the suboccipitals, and we talked about those a lot in other videos. But let's talk about the hip now. So I'll have you lay on your left side as you're facing me. Give her a pillow because we'd like her. So the hip is generally turning this way. And most people think hip, sometimes they think this is part of your hip, right? Well, and technically that's your pelvis. The hip joint is what we refer to as the femoral acetabular joint. Femur, acetabulum is the socket that the head goes into. Now here's a good point, Like When I stretch, and the reason we do this type of adjustment as chiropractors is um, to get some more motion out of the hip. So we call a side posture adjustment. 
But when I do a stretch, I'm actually holding her pelvis. So I'm actually locking this SI joint down and the lumbar area down by holding and supporting there. So now when I pull the hip or even do this with my leg, most people don't like it when I do that because it's a lot of stretch. I'm forcing just the hip to stretch. So right here where I'm dragging my forearm is all those tight muscles. And there is a lot there. It's about so really quick, one reason why like a super athlete or somebody does yoga a lot, triathlon, you know, doing a lot of biking or even people work out a lot, generate so much motion here in the lower back and the pelvis is tucking up uh, often that the hip here, the socket, is not getting true range of motion. It's all being robbed from here. So these people, when we get them in the side posture position, all the bending happens from the spine. I can't even do it on the model really, but see how those joints open up a little bit. So that's straining the joint capsule tissue. So they don't even move because there's such severe hypermobility, too much motion here in the SI joint and severe restriction at the same time. So they feel stuck, they feel locked up, they feel like they need to move, but they can't ever get it. So you might be one of these people or you might know these people who lay on the table with nothing's happening. That's what's going on. And that's just gonna keep contrasting getting worse and worse as we go until we bring stability and strength in this low back to act as a stabilizing structure so we can increase more hip motion. It's the little things. It's when you're walking. It's when you're bending, creating good proper movement. Because even if they're an athlete working out all the time and have six packs of abs, six pack abs, they can't, they still don't know how to move correctly. And that's the big caveat. And I want to help you guys out because you're my target audience is helping people who are already committed and working hard to bring stability. So work smarter, not harder. That's the take home here with the hips and lower back stability. Uh, piriformis is the one many people know because that has a tendency to clamp down on your sciatic nerve depending on how that's all situated. And generally we're just weaker on the inner thigh muscles. The iliopsoas and the adductors tend to be weaker and those are the muscles that help turn the hip inwards. So as chiropractors, we're trying to do the job to help loosen things up. The reason things are restricted at the time is just because not, we're not moving correctly. So we need to get some more motion, but we also need to strengthen as well. So when we do the side posture here, we're taking that hip and that pelvis, pushing it into the right direction, trying to get more movement here and readjusting that sacrum too, so that's in line. So they're moving correctly, but if the weakened, weakened muscles aren't rebalanced, it doesn't matter how much we stretch or how much we realign things, we still have to teach those muscles to be strong. I don't think you can do that. Get you back on your stomach one more time. So our job as chiropractors is to level out the pelvis, make sure the legs are even. We're also checking for any neurological things too. Neurological reflex let us know where to work. Just doing that a little bit, this actually feels much better in here. I don't even feel the need to adjust as much. So that it shows me that just stretching those hips out on that one side that was tighter helped this area. So that's the whole point of going to the chiropractor to loosen up those areas. And then it's best to do some strengthening. I would even say do a couple of founders right before you get adjusted. Then a couple right after, feel the difference there. That's gonna help retrain your body how to move correctly and really reapplying step A to the founder here. And then adding that little squeezer, squeezing the inner thigh, you're pulling the hip into the socket. And also you know, the shoulders, which we didn't talk too much about right now, that also is doing the same thing. Opening, squeezing it into the socket. Because hips and shoulders, once they're in the socket, they're moving as they're correct. But, correctly, but when they're not in the socket, that's when it robs most from the spine. And that's actually probably 90% of the reason why we find what we do in people. Come to the chiropractor next time, same stuff is there. Why? Got it back in place, something pulled it back out again. And usually it's, the, I didn't do anything, is usually what we hear. It's that you didn't strengthen those weaker muscles to bring stability to hold it back in place. And that's the missing key across the board that everyone's missing. So I'm finding the same areas that are locked up. And this is how I learned these exercises for myself to get out of pain. If I'm 90% of people have these reoccurring conditions, I started thinking, well, I probably have them too. It's just hard to adjust yourself and evaluate yourself. So 
not putting the cart before the horse by addressing all the postural symptoms like pelvic tilt. We're addressing simply the weakness in the spine. Weakness in the spine, teaching the hips to be a good foundation. And then you can work on pelvic tilts or forward head translation or round at that correct, you know, all the other stuff. Upper cross syndrome, lower cross syndrome. It's just all this gar jargon that confuses us. And we focus on one area, then we cause symptoms elsewhere because we're just addressing the symptoms. We need to address the body as a whole, bring stability to the spine, and then we can worry about that stuff. And usually you don't want to have to worry about that stuff because it's going to all be eliminated as you strengthen the spine. We're building the stance because that's all about the detach. So here's like warrior pose, right? The spine's bending a lot. And the difference between when we get at the end, when we're doing the exercises, that's when we're doing foundation training. <laughs> we're decompressing. Here's that step again, step eight. See how I get taller? All these steps should add length to your spine, more tension. And then going into the same exercise, now fighting against all those restriction, those tight muscles, using the weaker muscles to bring balance and stability to your body. And that's the difference between those two exercises. Why are you out of breath now? Because it's so tiring. It's a good workout. It's so tiring. We did, what, four minutes of foundation training at the end, and you guys were wiped. Exactly. After doing like 15 minutes of yoga, you were more tired from a couple minutes of foundation training. All right, thanks Dr. Klein. Yeah, take care guys.